Next up, uh, we're going to go to uh, Florida, Titusville. Nick, uh, thanks for hanging on the line. How are you doing today? Hi, yourself, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, Ken, I want to say I'm, I'm 84 years old, and the way you explain things makes it very easy to follow. That's uh, very, that. very, uh, very nice of you to say, Nick. I appreciate that uh, very much. Have a good day, sir. All right, you too. Live at TFNN, Breakout Investing. With your host, Ken Shreve. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy Hump Day. Welcome to another edition of Breakout Investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you daily on TFNN from 3 to 4 Eastern, right in front of the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. Uh, let's see, 877-927-6648. That is the number to use if you want to give me a call, talk about this market that you know continues to look pretty strong here, actually. Uh, 877-927-6648. Uh, don't forget, if uh, you can't listen live, the show is available as a podcast on iTunes. Head over there. Feel free to leave a review if you'd like. And you can listen to all TFNN programming on your smartphone. A lot of people are doing it that way these days. Just open your smartphone browser, type in tfnn.mobi in your smartphone browser, and you can listen to the stream that way as well. And uh, the daily reminder, don't forget about Tiger TV at tfnn.com. Channel 1, the show is carried live. It is archived on Channel 13 with Tiger TV. Of course, you get the audio of the show, but you can also look at charts live right along with me. Tiger TV is also viewable on your handheld device as well. To do that, open your smartphone browser, type in tfnn.com. Over on the top right-hand side of the homepage, you'll see a box with some electronic devices in there. Just click the box. It'll recognize what device you have and start streaming Tiger TV right on your handheld device. All right, let's uh, check in on the markets here. NASDAQ Composite holding gains smartly here. Sure looks like it wants to go higher. We will see what coming days uh, brings. Uh, tech index up near its session high. Up a little more than 12 points, four-tenths of a percent gain for the NASDAQ Composite to 3,123. So tech stocks looking okay here. Helped a lot by Apple. Let's check in on Apple here. Kind of a guess what would be the dictionary definition of a dead cat bounce here. Shares of Apple up 4.6% today. Impressive move for the former tech darling up $22.20 .20 to 50812. 50.812. Um, Apple has been under selling pressure, of course, for, for quite some time. Just this week, it fell Monday on volume of 26.2 million shares. It is uh, on Tuesday, I should say yesterday, it dropped again on volume of 31.3 million shares. Remember, this is a stock that normally trades, what, 21, 21.5 million a day, so you had two above average volume declines Monday and Tuesday and then today a big percentage gain but it's at 20 million shares right now so it's one and a half million short of its average daily volume looks like you you know you're probably going to come in around average today and maybe slightly uh, higher but uh, bottom line this is still a stock under distribution I'd be uh, very careful of Apple here I mean if you're gonna day trade it which is not my game you know let's you bought yesterday uh, during the uh, pinnacle of the selling, you'd be looking pretty good today. But that's a, that's a tough game. I don't uh, um, I don't swing trade like that. But um, Apple looks like a swing trading stock uh, to me, and not not necessarily a long term investment at uh, at this point. So tech stocks helped by a big move in Apple today. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. Uh, at last check, it uh, yeah, it's up a little bit, up a little more than a, a point to uh, 1473 up 1.35 points so uh, continuing to show relative price strength here we have five sessions in a row you can see five sessions in a row where the S&P or at least four headed into today where the S&P 500 was uh, closing near highs each session looks like we could get another close near highs uh, today so a lot of buyers around in this market, uh, or at least there are no sellers around. Not so much that there's a lot of buying demand out there, but no sellers around. So indices continue to hold gains smartly. The Dow right now down 22.5 points. 
to 13,512. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ today tracking a little bit lighter than what we saw yesterday. Yesterday, NASDAQ volume 1.82 billion shares. We're tracking about 10 percent lighter than that today. Volume on the New York Stock Exchange on Tuesday uh, light again at 600 million. We're tracking about 5 to 6 percent lower than that uh, today. Inside the Dow, let's take a look at a couple of Dow components here. Shares of Boeing. Uh, remain under pressure. This is uh, what a stock under uh, distribution looks like. Boeing having a, a tough time of it here, down another 3.9% today to 73.92. A lot of problems with the 787 Dreamliner. The um, uh, there was a, a, a emergency landing in Japan. Um, crews pilots detected a burning like smell. Looks like it's related to that battery issue uh, that has been identified. But there are uh, 24. About half of the Dreamliners in operation right now are operated by the Japanese airlines, and 24 have been grounded uh, at this at, at this point. So. Uh, Obviously, big problems for Boeing here. Stock gaps down today on the news um, under the assumption that this 787 issue could be bigger than initially uh, expected. So Boeing, have, Boeing having a rough day. Uh, bright spot in the Dow, Hewlett Packard. I'll tell you what, if you want to see what a stock under accumulation, you hear me mention the terms accumulation and distribution, accumulation, institutional buying, distribution, institutional selling. Uh, Hewlett Packard is a stock that has been clearly under a lot of accumulation since the market lows of mid November. Story today is that there's apparently some interest out there for the company's a couple of business units of uh, HPQ, the troubled autonomy uh, acquisition. Uh, apparently, there's some interest uh, for that, as well as its EDS uh, unit. So, um, lots of uh, talk out there that. Hewlett Packard is eventually going to, you know, split up and maybe spin off some of its uh, businesses. But uh, news today that there's some interest out there. Uh, some people may be getting in line to acquire the company's autonomy and EDS businesses. That is helping the stock again today. Uh, big move for Hewlett Packard again since mid-November. It was about $12 stock. It's uh, run all the way up to uh, $17.19. That's its latest price, up another 4% on the day. Uh, home builders are uh, still hanging in here pretty well. Got to mention the home builders. They continue to show relative price strength. We got pretty good numbers from Lennar yesterday. Uh, you can see the ITB here, the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Home Construction Index Fund holding gains uh, smartly here. In fact, let me just um, pull up a chart of the ITB with the 10-day uh, 20-day and 50-day moving average plotted here. You can see the ITB is basically sitting right at its 10-day moving average here. Support underneath that would be right around 2150. And then the 50-day moving average would be uh, 2075. So uh, perhaps a, a decent entry point here if the ITB comes down to that 2150 level uh, and finds uh, support uh, that uh, could be an opportunity perhaps to start a small position. But a lot of uh, home builders out there continue to act pretty well here. Uh, Meritage, uh, keeping an eye on Meritage here, uh, forming a base. Now could be forming a handle area. So who knows? Does Meritage eventually try to break out over this uh, swing point here of 43? Not out of the question. Technicals look pretty good here. Uh, Ryland Group holding gains uh, smartly. Uh, chart looks similar to the uh, ITB, just not giving up uh, any ground uh, at all. And uh, again, maybe a market pullback. You, you get a pullback to support here, and um, you can you can nibble on some of these uh, builders. Uh, Pulte Group, PHM, another one. They're just a, a dime a dozen. Those out there that are showing uh, relative uh, uh, price strength. So uh, builders looking uh, pretty good. And uh, let's not forget about that big move by the uh, Spider S and P Retail Index ETF yesterday. Following through today, up another six tenths of a percent to sixty four ninety five. Uh, uh, if you've been paying attention to the market in recent weeks, you know there's a lot of concerns about the uh, consumer. Um, you know, more money coming out of paychecks. Will the consumer uh, be able to hold up? But the retail sales numbers yesterday were were pretty good. No big surprises. Actually, the overall sales came in better than expected. You had a big breakout for the XRT. 
uh, yesterday over 64 and uh, last trading at 64.95. So um, if you're looking at the the retail strength, at least measured by the the XRT, uh, this is a, a, a ETF that. It has been under accumulation, really, for the past uh, two weeks or so. You can see several above-average volume price declines here. XRT remains under uh, uh, accumulation. Bond yields uh, under pressure again today, but not by much. Uh, they look to be lower for seven out of the past eight sessions. Uh, the 10-year note uh, right now at 1.82%. The 30-year bond at 3.02%. February gold today settles at $1,683.20 an ounce, only down at 70 cents on the session. Bulls and bears continue to battle it out here when it comes to the uh, GLD. Looks like it's probably going to be range bound here, but it looks to me like significant resistance uh, potential at its 50 day moving average at 164.29. Uh, right now, the GLD is at 162.88. So it only has, um, well, less than, less than two points to go to get to that uh, 50 day moving average. Uh, Downtrend still intact here, so uh, this is going to have to prove itself a lot more for me to believe that a new uptrend is about to uh, start. So the GLD remains under uh, selling pressure. Take a look at the U.S. dollar index. Not much movement in the in the dollar uh, today. Let's see. Where's there? It is my U.S. dollar index. Uh, yesterday the index closed at 79.78. At last check, it's at 79.81. So only up about three ticks or so. Uh, the U.S. dollar index uh, still can't get out of its own way here. This is in a downtrend as uh, well, and actually in a pretty bearish uh, technical setup. So uh, you know, a lot of technicians out there expecting more weakness ahead for. The dollar, and finally, February crude oil settles at ninety-four dollars and twenty-four cents a barrel, up ninety-six cents on the session. One uh, percent gain for February crude. Let's check in on the USO. This is the United States Oil Fund, one of the more popular oil ETFs out there. It uh, it tracks the spot price of West Texas Intermediate Light Sweet Crude Oil, and you can see here. Big rally for the USO since uh, since early December or so, uh, trying to reclaim, move back above its 200-day moving average, and uh, you know, back above the line today, it is uh, up 30 cents to 34.29. That's the USO. We did get some supply data today from the Energy Information Administration, the EIA. Oil stocks fell by 951,000 barrels. The estimate was for a gain of two point or a build of 2.2 million barrels uh, gasoline up 1.9 million barrels that was a little less than expected and distillates that includes heating oil uh, diesel that was up uh, 1.7 million uh, mostly in line I think the estimate was for a build of 1.5 million so uh, that is the story there lots of individual stocks uh, to go over we will do that still got a lot of show left uh, 50 minutes left to go in, um, excuse me, 40 minutes left to go in Wednesday's session. We'll come back, talk about stocks, breakout investing on TFNN. Ken Shreve with you. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is proud to partner with Great Panther Silver for another exciting silver coin giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Super Silver Giveaway begins the week of January 28th and will be choosing 47 lucky winners. It's free to enter with absolutely no strings attached. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com today to fill out your entry form. Every hour that we're on the air, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. the week of January 28th, we'll be randomly choosing one lucky winner that will win a silver coin or bar from Great Panther Silver and TFNN. And the final hour of the week, Friday, February 1st, we'll choose three lucky winners. That's 47 winners in just one week with over $1,000 in silver given away to our loyal listeners. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex symbol GPL or on the Toronto Stock Exchange symbol GPR. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. I wanted to check in on shares of Oceaneering here, OII, beautiful breakout for the stock yesterday, uh, following through today, extending gains up another nine tenths of a percent to 59 at 19, seeing some action in, in the uh, energy space, uh, particularly in the oil and gas uh, sector. Oceaneering, a uh, a, a good play here. Uh, also have recently mentioned uh, Cameron International, C-A-M, a good uh, technical setup here. In terms of the exploration and production companies, you know, there are some good growth prospects out there. Uh, one of my favorite uh, names at this point, uh, pretty good fundamentals, good technical setup as well, would be Continental Resources, CLR. Nice uh, nice move for the stock here from, you know, 72 up to about uh, 82 thereabouts come nice nice sideways movement here so uh, we'll see if this one can eventually make a pop over uh, 82 but they have a pretty strong uh, presence in the bacon bacon formation that's b a k k e n that's in north dakota and montana oil rich area and continental has a big presence there i uh, wouldn't be surprised to see uh, this one do well in uh, coming months. So uh, some interesting activity among uh, oil, the oil and gas uh, sector. Economic uh, data today, we had the consumer price index on the heels of wholesale inflation yesterday, which was tame once again. Consumer prices in December uh, were flat. That was uh, mostly in line with expectations. Um, the uh, core rate was up one-tenth of a percent. That was in line as well. So no threat 
uh, at least in terms of the consumer price index data. Also, the Fed Beige Book uh, came out today. That's an an anecdotal look across the Fed's uh, 12 districts. Uh, Basically, what does the economy uh, look like? And the report basically showed that the economy expanded at a modest or moderate pace across the country in early January. Spending and hiring kind of uh, held back by concerns over fiscal policy. And, of course, that is going to be back in the headlines again. uh, The market's focus right now is fourth quarter earnings. It's going to be very, very busy next week and very busy the following week as well. Um, I think the news is going to be good enough where we could see some additional strength here in the market, but you know, all bets are off when the calendar turns and the market's not focused on earnings anymore. It's kind of focused on the political bickering that is sure to be back in the headlines. Um, you know, February, March, and you know, concerns about the economy and these types of uh, these types of things. So uh, we'll see. Uh, right now, the focus is fourth quarter earnings, and um, you know, I think that uh, uh, I think that the the good news is is probably going to out new out outdo the bad, which could be enough to bring uh, some more buyers in from the. Uh, sidelines. Speaking of earnings, well, let's start by taking a look at the XLF. This is the Financial Select Sector Spider ETF. Uh, yet another ETF out there showing relative price strength. Uh, nice little breakout for the XLF. Over sixteen seventy uh, at seventeen sixteen. You know, I don't. I don't think you're chasing here. It has made a. It ha- has made a nice move. You had an initial breakout over sixteen twenty five. And then some downward drifting action here, and a you know big gap up for the XLF on January second, uh, I believe that was, and cleared a swing point of 1670. So the XLF still looks pretty good here. Uh, it is up uh, only three cents today to 1716, but uh, finan- uh, sentiment fairly positive in the financial sector. Uh, Goldman Sachs uh, reported earnings, yet another extended stock out here after a recent breakout over 130. Stock was last trading at 141.16, up $5.57 on the session, 4% gain for, for Goldman. The numbers were pretty darn good here. Uh, earnings up uh, 204% from a year ago to $5.60 a share. The estimate was for or three dollars and seventy eight so uh, big beat on the bottom line revenue growth also impressive up fifty three percent from a year ago to nine point two four billion that was well above the consensus estimate of seven point nine one so uh, no surprise to see the stock doing well today uh, j p Morgan Chase and company was trading lower in the pre market when it announced uh, results, but it has uh, rallied back another Extended stock here. You had a recent breakout for J.P. Morgan Chase over 43. Another breakout over 44. It's at 46.62 right now. So I would call this extended. I would wait for a wait for a pullback here. Stock is up 27 cents today, six tenths of a percent to 46.62. Numbers of J.P. Morgan Chase uh, not bad. Up uh, earnings up 54 percent to a dollar 39. The estimate was for a dollar 16. So nice beat there. Sales up. 10% to $23.65 billion. That was a little below estimates, but uh, investors shrugging that off, and J.P. Morgan modestly higher today. Okay, lots more to get to, folks. We're going to talk about some, uh, some interesting setups out there. A whole bunch of uh, good stuff coming up. Stick with me. Breakout Investing on TFNN. We'll be right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. 
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by Direction Shares. To learn more about technical tools for the sophisticated active investor, hit the Direction Shares banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, friends, to Breakout Investing on TFNN. A couple of house cleaning items. First of all, my first webinar of 2013 will take place tomorrow at TFNN.com. You can find more details right on the homepage. It's going to start at 6.30. It will be archived. If you can't make it live, it will be archived at the site for uh, 30 days. But it is for uh, subscribers to my Ultimate Growth Stocks newsletter. And it is also free for people that avail themselves of a 30-day a free trial to the newsletter so looks like uh, attendance is going to be uh, pretty good so I urge you to uh, to join me and a bunch of other people we'll do uh, a QA and a uh, towards the end but uh, we'll just kind of talk about this market what expectations are uh, what to do between now and the end of fourth quarter earnings season are there you know names out there that are in position to, to buy or are there just too many extended stocks out there you're going to get a very good idea of how I go about the market how I use a combination of fundamental and technical and analysis to evaluate stocks and uh, it will be very informative very educational and after all that is the point of a uh, webinar so that'll be Tuesday January uh, excuse me Thursday get the date right Ken Thursday January 17th at 6 30 p.m. Eastern you can register right on the home page of tfnn.com and then uh, also another event going on at tfnn.com the Great Panther Silver Super Silver giveaway that is going to be taking place from January 28th through February 1st. 
Uh, every hour from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern, starting January 28th, we'll be giving away a free piece of silver. It is uh, absolutely free to register. More information on the homepage of TFNN.com. All right, that out of the way. Let's uh, you know continue to talk about the market here. I wanted to touch on shares of Facebook. Been getting some questions about uh, Facebook. The stock is uh, under a pressure again today. It uh, declined in heavy volume yesterday. There was a lot of buildup about this. Uh, press event that was held yesterday where they uh, they released uh, this new graph search feature and uh, people saying, okay, can we buy on, on the pullback here? Uh, you know, my, my take is that it's still early here. You had a higher volume decline on Monday. You had a a higher volume decline on Tuesday. Volume is uh, really drying up uh, today. Very, very light volume. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Facebook pay a visit to its last breakout area, which basically coincides with its 20-day uh, simple moving average right here at right around 28.42 thereabouts. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit more consolidation here. Uh, it's still uh, still early. Uh, I do I do like the stock. And uh, so does uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch, actually. Today they raised their price target on Facebook to 35 from 31, citing the potential of the new graph search feature announced yesterday. Uh, analyst Justin Post said that uh, graph search was, quote, an example of Facebook's ongoing innovation to increase engagement and potential to add revenues to the platform. Uh, the graph search services currently in beta basically allows members to search for content po posted by their uh, posted by their friends so Facebook in the early stages of a pullback here uh, technically still looks fine here but let's see if it can pay a, a visit down to that uh, 2840 2850 level uh, thereabouts and um, um, We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Now, shares of Google have been under pressure. Remember, Google recently recently tried to uh, break out over 738. It is now, you know, back underneath that buy point. So, pretty poor technical action for Google in recent days. Uh, it is uh, down 1.4 percent today to 714.74. And the issue here is, well, some people are talking about the introduction of that graph uh, search yesterday by Facebook. Some analysts are questioning the potential impact to Google's core web search business. The general consensus seems to be probably not going to hurt it that much. But you know what? Google has been under selling pressure in three out of the past four uh, trading sessions. And uh, this is just a, a breakout over 738 that uh, has not worked at all. So uh, Google's going to have to prove itself more to me to, to think that this is a viable uh, buying opportunity here. Anytime a stock breaks out over a swing point, one of the issues that Google had, you can see the volume bars down here, is that you just never had meaningful signs of accumulation of the stock when it was trying to break out over that swing point of 738. It was, you know, a little bit of volume came into it, but certainly not enough to uh, to for a sustained uh, breakout. And earlier this week on Monday, you see a higher volume uh, decline here. Uh, tried to bounce back in heavy volume yesterday. You could just see a modest gain under renewed pressure uh, today. Wanted to take a look at shares of Cabela's CAB. This is a specialty retailer. Uh, they're basically involved in hunting, fishing, camping equipment, outdoor merchandise, uh, things like that. So this stock really came in hard off its high starting in October. I actually corrected about 32% from about 56 down to it was uh, maybe 38, something like that. But uh, what a move it's been for Cabela's basically since uh, mid to late uh, December. It uh, corrected 32%. It's up about that much, 32%, since um, mid-December or so, up another 6.3% today to 49.85. Story here in Washington, D.C. today, President Obama urging Congress to act swiftly on his uh, proposals for sweeping changes to U.S. gun laws. Uh, CAB sells a lot of uh, firearms at its uh, at its uh, sporting goods stores. Uh, this is going to be tough for Obama, of course, to get it through the Republican-controlled uh, House. He proposed a ban on large ammunition magazines and uh, 
uh, also wants a requirement for universal background checks for gun buyers. Or some gun control advocates say that up to 40% of gun sales are made without background checks. So uh, Cabela, Cabela's benefiting on uh, this news. Gun makers in general also higher on the news out of Washington today. Smith and Wesson. See, this stock is uh, bouncing back up 6.5% to $8.98. And Sturm Ruger and company up 5.5% to $50.65. So uh, that is the story there. Also heard from Chipotle. Chipotle today, big bull market leader that's been under pressure for a long time in a downtrend not looking uh, very good uh, technically for several months now chipotle down six percent today to 279.54 the company came out they said food costs rose more than expected in the fourth quarter um they also cut their earnings guidance for uh, for the fourth quarter they're looking or expecting profit uh, between a dollar ninety two and a dollar ninety seven a share of the current consensus consensus estimate for two o nine so that 's well below the consensus estimate sales up sixteen percent to six hundred and ninety point nine million that is what the uh, current consensus estimate is Jeffrey's uh, kind of analyst dueling back and forth here. Jeffrey's maintained an underperform rating on the stock with a two hundred and fifteen dollar price target. Uh, William Bear and R. W. Baird came out and defended the stock today. So the bulls and bears uh, continue to battle out. The bears definitely winning uh, so far. So collateral damage in the restaurant group. You know, been looking at shares of uh, Panera Bread under distribution here. This is a stock that. Uh, looks vulnerable to me. Holding up pretty well, I must say. It's only down nine-tenths of a percent today to 162.69. You know, you've heard the expression, where there's smoke, there's fire. If one restaurant is talking about rising food costs, um, is it possible that this is going to seep into other stocks in the group? Uh, Panera, uh, again, does not look all that good from a technical perspective here, but you can't, this company does have a good track record of execution, and it does tend to knock the cover off the ball when uh, earnings uh, come out. Both of these companies report on February 5th for Panera, uh, quarterly profit expected to be up 23% to $1.74 a share, sales up 16% to just over $574 million. So uh, this one is not a short yet, but I like it short more than I do long at, uh, at this point. If uh, Panera were to start a new uptrend, that's not going to happen until it gets, it's got to go about another five points uh, higher from here uh, for it to start a new technical uptrend. Until then, the stock definitely looks uh, vulnerable to me. And a lot of other stocks are looking vulnerable out there as well at this point. Regeneron Pharmaceuticals, R-E-G-N. Remember, this is a stock that recently announced uh, ILEA sales at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference last week in San Francisco. Flirting with a break below its 50-day moving average here. Stock is down 2.5% today to 170.40. Uh, Regeneron, again, key drug is ILEA. It treats age-related wet macular degeneration, the leading cause of severe vision loss in the elderly or people over 60, 60 years old. So Regeneron um, looks like money is starting to rotate out of this uh, stock. Hasn't broken down yet, but another name uh, looking looking uh, vulnerable here. Also in biotech, let's check in on shares of Alexian. Alexian, their their flagship drug is uh, Solaris. Uh, this is another stock that's been it's just up up huge for the past uh, few years. Another one where buying demand seems to be drying up, working on four straight declines here. Not a lot of volume behind the decline, but still under uh, selling pressure. Sellers appear to be gaining the upper hand here, down 81 cents today, eight tenths of a percent to 97.41. One name I was watching here, uh, HDFC Bank. This is an India-based bank. Uh, Monday, nice bounce off the 50-day moving average. Look what happens. Yesterday, down. And today, a break below the 50-day line. So all of a sudden, a pretty good technical picture has 
has gone to a not so good technical picture. HDB down 2.8% today to uh, 39 at 71. At the very least, this one looked like it's ready to base uh, base for a little while. Not uh, not a buy. And frankly, even when it was up on Monday. You know that what I've been saying is the the ultimate growth stocks model portfolio is currently long eight names. I don't want to get too loaded up with long positions here. Yes, the technical picture of the broad market looks pretty good, but you also have a lot of extended stocks out there. So if the market is really not giving me a lot of buying opportunities to, to, to work with, I'm going to keep my powder uh, mostly dry. And I want to avoid that common pitfall of, of not you know, buying a, you know, keeping my focus limited to only institutional quality stocks. Uh, I just didn't like HDFC Bank enough uh, to to nibble at it when it bounced off the 50-day moving average on on Monday. And uh, again, this is a fickle market because you can see technical action on Monday uh, all of a sudden has gotten a lot weaker due to a big volume decline yesterday in the stock and more weakness uh, today. So HDB not looking uh, that great. Let's also check in on CRM, Salesforce.com. No, no sell signals in uh, in this stock. Still holding above support, but kind of a bearish day for the stock. Down four dollars and seventy three cents, two point seven percent decline to one sixty nine ninety two. This is a stock I am uh, currently long, but we bought this one right, so we've got a cushion here. Uh, I did decide to trim the position today. Um, uh, a little bit because of the bearish uh, price action. Apparently there are some questions the SEC has with how the company uh, reports its uh, earnings. Uh, still early here. Uh, all I know is that there are big sellers in the stock today and it made sense to lighten up in the uh, position. So we still uh, own some. Uh, it's a nicely profitable uh, position, but um, you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it trades in, uh, in in coming days. But anytime you know you get an SEC related headlines, generally, generally not good for a stock, and is is going to bring uh, is going to bring some sellers uh, into the said stock. Shares of Yahoo having a good day today. This one looks pretty pretty strong here. Yahoo visits its uh, 50 day moving average recently. It is up 2.8 percent to twenty dollars and six cents. Uh, there was a report. That's uh, from Bloomberg that said China-based e-commerce firm Alibaba was working with investment bankers on uh, a possible uh, IPO. Uh, remember in September, a few months ago, Yahoo cashed out a sizable stake in uh, Alibaba. I think they invested initially $1 billion in the company back in 2005. Yahoo still owns about 23% of Alibaba. Uh, but uh, stock benefiting on that news and uh, just you know yahoo was was uh, was was very extended obviously as it it ran up from you know 16 and a half all the way up uh, close to 20 it is um it is uh, pulling back here came down to its 50 day moving average and when you look at a weekly chart for yahoo it is uh you see a nice bounce off the 10-week moving average here at uh, at 19 at 21. So definitely a stock that's been under accumulation. You had a little bit of distribution in the stock last week, but again, supporting action at the 10-week moving average. Uh, this one looks uh, has been strong and continues to look strong. Another downgrade for ARM Holdings today, but got to hand it to the stocks, holding up uh, pretty well here. It is uh, up 41 cents to 40.94. Uh, UBS downgrades to neutral from buy. That's on the heels of a downgrade from, or to equal weight from overweight by Morgan Stanley yesterday. Piper Jaffrey on Monday cut its rating to neutral. ARM Holdings, still a super strong uh, stock here. Quick look at its uh, weekly chart here. Before we head into break, some Support at 37.63. Love to buy it down there. We'll see. We'll be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades 
open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Just recently on on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator, also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Five minutes left to go in Wednesday's session. Let's check in on the markets here. Tech stocks outperforming. Nice little rally in Apple today. Uh, a lot of people calling it a dead cat bounce due to all the technical damage that's been done in this stock since uh, October. But the Nasdaq up eight points, three tenths of a percent gain to three thousand one nineteen. Uh, the Dow down thirty points to thirteen thousand five oh four. S and P five hundred pretty much unchanged at this point fourteen. 72. Uh, mentioned uh, before we went to break, talking about arm holdings. A lot of people waiting for a pullback here. Uh, weekly chart almost looks like uh, Yahoo, and we're just kind of waiting for a pullback down to the 10 week moving average here, right around 37.50. If it finds support there, that could be an opportunity to, smart, to start a a small position. Uh, one thing we know about ARM is that it is well positioned for growth. Fundamentals uh, should be good here for uh, several quarters looking forward. Uh, their main markets are 
you know, mobile and tablet, probably the two best places to be right now. This is a chip designer that licenses its uh, technologies all over the place in uh, in tech. So uh, good fundamentals, good technicals. Uh, the stock has run a lot already, had a nice, powerful breakout over 30 um, back uh, late last year. Get a pull back down to that 3750 level. Uh, right now, shares trading at 4094. So it's uh, it's under a little bit of pressure here, but still has uh, about three points or so, three points more uh, weakness to get down to that 10-week moving average, an area where I think it could find uh, support. Uh, also, taking a close look here at a company called Aquen Financial OCN. This is a provider of residential commercial loan servicing. Uh, huge growth prospects here. Like the base uh, a lot. The stock is down 51 cents today, 1.3% to 38.44. But when we look at a weekly chart here for Aquin Financial, we've got a nice base taking shape here. So if uh, we get a new burst of money coming in from the sidelines here, this is another stock I think can outperform because of huge growth prospects. That is the that is the bottom line here. Anytime you're looking at strong technicals, you want to see a growth story that you know potentially can drive share performance going forward. In 2011, Aquin earned 70 cents, uh, 77 cents a share. In 2012, we're going to hear from uh, fourth quarter earnings soon from this company. They're expected to earn a dollar 44, a dollar 44 versus 77 cents. That is uh, an 87 percent increase. And then in 2013, you're talking about a major acceleration in earnings. Um, uh, so if they earn $1.44 in 2012, looking out into 2013, the Thomson Reuters consensus estimate looking for profit of 446, which would be better than 200% annual earnings growth. So uh, bottom line that this is a, a, a stock that there's still room for more funds uh, to come in here, has a lot of qualities. I like to see in a stock. Uh, Coors was trading lower early in the session. This is Michael Coors, not the beer, K-O-R-S, and uh, still holding above its 50-day moving average here. Having a hard time getting going, but again, the market is not quite ready to move here. Uh, right now, Coors down 21 cents to 54.11, trading up near its session high after hitting an intraday low of 52.22. Check in on eBay ahead of earnings after the close. A lot of people expecting big numbers from eBay. They're expected to earn 69 cents a share, up 15% from a year ago. Sales up 18% to 3.98 billion. eBay in a decent technical setup here. Ahead of earnings, uh, we'll see if uh, if the numbers cause uh, the share price to move higher or lower in after hours trading. That's coming up after the close. And then tomorrow before the open, more financials. Bank of America and Citigroup. We're also going to hear from American Express and Intel as well. So busy day of earnings tomorrow. Coming up next, the Tom O'Brien Show. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Let me tell you something, folks. Yes. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. No. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.